Welcome to AxoSoft. This video will show you how to get started with your first project using our product. We will walk through the AxoSoft interface, how to create your items, how to groom your backlog, how to move items through a workflow, and then how to track your progress. Let's start with the AxoSoft interface. What you see in AxoSoft is governed by your tab selection. By default, you may have tabs like Work Items, Release Planner, or Dashboard. Clicking each of these will change what you see in the application, and you have the ability to add additional tabs by clicking this icon. Let's take a look at the Work Items tab. The Work Items tab, and any item tab like it, is split into three major sections. The Organize panel on the left, the Workspace in the center, and the Details panel to the right. The Organize panel is where all your projects, releases, users, and more will live. The selection you have in any of these panes will automatically filter what you see in the workspace. The workspace in the center displays your work items. You can toggle between list view and card view to get different item layouts. Finally, the details panel on the right will give you a synopsis for items you have selected in the workspace, and this is a great way to get a snapshot of an item's description, notes, comments, work logs, or whether it has any sub-items. If you went through the tutorial, you may have already created a project and some items. For this example, however, let's create a new project folder. When you create a project folder, AxoSoft will ask you if you wish to create a related product to releases. This means that it will create a release with the exact same name in the releases pane. I want to build up my releases in a specific way, so I will leave the box unchecked. Once you create this project folder, start adding items. You can add items by clicking Add in this toolbar. This will allow you to fill in the item details with information like title, description, assigned to, and more. All of these fields make up what we call the field template. All field templates are customizable, and you can edit this field template by either navigating to Tools, Fields, Field Templates, or by clicking this gear when editing an item. Feel free to rearrange the fields in your preferred order. You can drag and drop other fields from the left over to the right, or remove fields by dragging them the other way. You even get the ability to add custom fields, which you can do by clicking here. This customization of the item field template is just one of the many ways AxoSoft lets you tailor to your project management style. Rinse and repeat this process to continue adding items to your backlog. If you need to edit an item, select it and hit Edit in the toolbar. You can also hit E on your keyboard to jump to edit mode. To populate your backlog quicker, navigate over to Tools, Utilities, Import Data to import spreadsheets of items you have on file. Once you have a sizable backlog, it is time to groom your backlog in preparation for release planning. The first tool available to you is Rank Mode. Rank Mode allows you to set the importance of your items by positioning the more important items towards the top. Items that remain in the unranked section have no rank against one another. They are all equally unranked. We recommend adding filters to limit the items you see while you rank. For example, you can remove items from view that are already completed. Once you are done ranking, you may need to return and edit your top items to include more information. It is at this stage you may want to ensure you have values for initial estimate and remaining estimate included. Use the keyboard shortcut D to quickly update these values for a selected item. With your backlog groomed and estimated, it is now time to plan our release. Releases are time boxes that allow you to set a deadline for a group of items. If you are familiar with Agile, AxoSoft supports planning versions, releases, and sprints. However, AxoSoft is flexible 
to accept any naming convention. The Release Planner provides a way to include resource allocation for your sprints and releases. Click to add the Release Planner tab if it is not already enabled. The Release Planner will appear on the right side, while your workspace will appear on the left. Use the Organize panel to filter the workspace. You can even enable additional filters so that you only see items that are up for consideration this sprint. To create the upcoming sprint, you have two choices. You can either use the Release Planner or the Organize panel to create your sprint or release. I will use the Organize panel for this example. and then select my newly created sprint in the Release Planner. The Release Planner allows you to quickly adjust the start date and due date and edit your release details. Since we have our backlog set up, we can start to add team members to this release. Start by either typing the names of team members or you can jump straight to adding items to this release. Notice that any items already assigned to a team member will automatically add that team member to this release. Once added, each team member will have their own section with the number of items assigned to them, the amount of time already assigned, and any available capacity where capacity is consumed by the remaining estimates of the assigned items. Capacity is the most important part of the release planner. When you edit a team member, you will see where to set user workdays set the number of hours this user works daily, and set vacation days. Each user also has a resource allocation percentage. So if this user is not working on any other overlapping releases, this will default to 100%. However, if you add a user who is already allocated in a different concurrent release, Axosoft will alert you and auto-calculate the remaining availability for your upcoming release. You can manually set the resource allocation to any percentage. For example, if this user is only available for half the time, and you set the allocation to 50%, then Axosoft will adjust the user's available capacity to match that 50% allocation. Vacation days are automatically factored in as well. The user's available capacity will turn red if you over-allocate work to one of your team members. Use this feedback to adjust the workload accordingly. Axosoft will visually total the work assigned to this release in the upper right corner of the planner. Users' capacities roll up the total hours assigned to individual users, the total hours assigned to teams, the hours left unassigned, and your remaining available release capacity. Once you have set up projects, releases, and other settings, it's time to get to work. Team members can access their items by adding the default work items tab labeled My Items. This will show the user all items that are currently assigned to them. Card view is a great way for displaying where items are in the workflow. As users move through the workflow, they may drag and drop items to the next stage. Alternatively, users may use the drop down menu to update a selected item's workflow step, regardless of whether you are in card view or list view. Hitting W on the keyboard will pull up a work log. Work logs are critical for updating the burndown chart and other useful gadgets and reporting in Axosoft, so be sure your teammates use it for at least the last step in the workflow. Work logs are also accessible through the details panel or as an option by right clicking on an item. Team members are free to only log into Axosoft to update workflow or items or log work. If you need to update workflow, Navigate to Tools, Other Settings, Workflows. We recommend checking out these resources for more information on configuring your workflow. With the planning complete and work started, let's now make sure we can track our progress. The best way to track your progress for any release is to use the burndown chart. The burndown chart tracks the remaining estimates of all items assigned to your release or sprint. As you and your team log work logs, the burndown will begin to update and estimate your projected ship date. 
While every release or sprint has this burn down shortcut, this chart is available for your dashboard as well. When you access the dashboard, click on the dashboard name to create a new dashboard. This is where we set public access, the size of the dashboard, and global dashboard settings. Configuring global dashboard settings make it easy to build out or update your dashboard if you are only looking to have one sprint or release shown at a time. Once you save your settings, you will see all the dashboard gadgets available. If you add a burndown chart gadget, the global dashboard settings will autofill the burndown settings and allow you to tailor any other settings. Other gadgets include the item chart, required velocity which tells you how fast the team needs to work in order to meet its deadline, the current velocity which will display the current velocity of your selected release, the speedometer which is a visual way to see your projected ship date, required velocity and the current velocity all at once, cycle time and flow so the flow chart tells you how many items are in a workflow step or status by day over a period of time. So it's great for spotting bottlenecks. Cycle time tells you how long an item has been sitting in a workflow step or status, and you can group this by team member or any other types of grouping. Work remaining totals the remaining estimates of the items in your release. Plain text displays a message to your dashboard viewers. And the estimated versus actual gadget is great for sprint retrospectives as it compares your initial estimates with what actually happened. Item charts are the most flexible gadget in your dashboard. It groups data by count, remaining estimate, or work done. As an example, let's name this item chart workload by user. Select assigned to for group data by and set the aggregation type to item count. We will group data by assigned to, set aggregation type to item count, add an additional series, workflow step, and chart type to pie chart. Okay, here is the item chart. If you click on any one of these data series, you can dive further into the workflow step series you specified earlier. Try different combinations to see what works best for your team. Lastly, Dashboards can be shared with non-Axosoft users. Enabling this URL will let you share this dashboard with non-Axosoft users like managers, executives, and stakeholders. You now have the basics to start your project. For more details about workflows, field templates, and more, check out our support documentation or schedule a session with our team. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.